we're bringing forward the uh, Elide Fireball. Um, it's probably the next evolution in firefighting. Um, it's standalone. It goes for five years. It'll um, um, not require uh, recertification every six months. Um, you don't even have to be there for this thing to put a fire out. The moment a flame hits it, it's active. It happens. There are patents all around the world on this already. Um, there is uh, UN certification. Um, the Australian standards um, here in Australia, um, it doesn't fit a fire extinguisher standard because it's not a pressurised vessel. So they are now currently making a new standard for the fireball. So it's in progress now under certification. And that's only because of FMH Global. Uh, they've gone, oh, but it doesn't have an Australian standard. Well, guess what? It's coming. So, yeah. Um, the patencies around the world are, are, are too much for me to list. The, um, the man himself behind it got caught in a multi-storey building fire. When he got caught in the multi-storey building fire, he watched people jump out the windows to their own death um, and decided there's got to be a better way to save lives. And you can't get better than first response as a, um, a firefighter. Um, you can't get um, better care in nature than a firefighter. But the next thing that you can do is have something that will extinguish a flame and allow people to be able to either evacuate the building or get other personnel out. The fireball itself is not here to try and take over the role of a fire extinguisher. Be sure to understand that because the simple fact is the fireball is a standalone tool. Okay, and it's another tool in your arsenal. And it doesn't matter whether you're in underground, above ground, in a building, or you want to protect your assets. And one of the biggest things with companies nowadays, especially in mining, they want to cover their assets as much as possible and they want minimal downtime. If you get a control box fire, you want it out ASAP. Okay, and at the same time, you've got to look at the bottom line, dollar wise. So they're looking for new innovations, new ways to save property and save money. Yeah, basically this is about the, the man himself. Um, his um, name's uh, Fenton Kimart, I think they call him, um, is the correct name. Um, he's just pushing for it all around the world, everywhere. He's got a licence, got it patented. We've had um, China trying to do knockoffs with the AFO ball, um, found themselves in a bucket load of hot water because they are now being sued for millions. Um, because it is worldwide patencies. The, um, what's in the fireball? The fireball itself has a uh, polyethylene film around the outside. The second layer inside it is your um, expanded polyester foam. And the third section in the middle is your um, number three, which is your extinguishing powder, which is ammonium, uh, monoammonium sulphate. Um, they are, the whole entire fireball is environmentally safe and human safe. The um, pyrotechnics inside that are used, like the um, fuse and breaker that's in the middle there, actually creates an implosion and it'll actually implode and make it push all the powder out. Um, Metropolitan Fire did testing with four glasses of water around it and four balloons around it, set it off didn't disrupt the balloons, didn't disrupt the water. The, um, but it still spread. The, um, the fuse run itself is the main key element that has to be hit by fire to make it go off. <coughs> heat won't make it go off, it'll distort it. You get higher heats. A flame needs to hit the actual fireball to make it active. And it's generally within, they allow up to 10 seconds for activation but 90% of the time, they're going off in three seconds. It's automatically activated, it's manually activated. Automatic is when a fire comes to it. Manually is when one of you guys pick it up, whoosh, drop it in a fire, which we'll see outside in a minute. The, um, as I said, a three minute, uh, three second detonation. Um, 
generally about a nine metre square coverage is what it'll actually cover. In some instances, it goes a bit further. In confined space or if you're in a building, depending on what objects are in the way, it depends on whether or not it won't go past a wall, so to speak. So yeah, there's, there's no such thing as a false activation because it can't happen. You need the third part of the triangle to make this happen and that is the flame. Without the flame, it doesn't activate. So yeah, lightweight, 1.3 kilos. Um, as you'll see when you pass it around, you'll get to feel the weight of it. Um, we do actually have a four inch smaller ball now, which is a designated waterproof ball. Um, only has a 12 month shelf life. These ones actually have a five year shelf life, um, which is what we warrant them out to use. The silver one is purely designed for marine area wet locations, um, as in jet boats and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, but there are other applications where water prevails and needs to be used. Um, you can't drop it from above two and a half, actually two and a half metres, uh, because it will start to crack the foam out of cell. Okay, so you've got to remember, it doesn't explode on impact. All it does is crack and fall apart. So it needs a flame to activate it. Um, yeah, basic five year lifespan. Um, there's no n annual need for um, inspection or periodical. We recommend that you do, purely because of the fact that you have vermin that crawl around in places where you've got this stuff. You have humans that walk around and pick it up and go, let's go play basketball. And yeah, how many guys have been on night shift and yeah, put it back. So yeah, there are areas that we think that you should. If it's in your house or something like that, you can put it in the roof above the, the heat lamp in your bathroom, that sort of thing, not a problem. Or above a exhaust fan, that sort of stuff. So, but you don't need to go chasing and checking it. Um, periodically, we'd say, have a look every 12 months. Other than that, it's in for five years and it activates. After five years, it will actually still work. It doesn't go five years ago, oh, not gonna work. Generally lose about 20 to 30% of activity. So, which means instead of going nine square meters, you'd probably go seven. So, but once they've come out of their, their shelf or been out of, out of service, we recommend that you use them for training purposes. Uh, get your guys loose, set them loose with them, throw them in them. They um, put them in scenarios where they use them. Best thing ever. Um, it has a loud alarm noise. The loud, the loud alarm noise is the actual 120 decibel explosion bank that's inside. It actually goes off when the explosion happens. And it'll, you'll hear it out there, it's a loud bang. The um, classifications come down to, it'll do A, B, C, E and F. Okay? It will not put out metal fires. Okay? So there are some fires that it won't. The fireball will do things that a fire extinguisher won't. The fire extinguisher will do things that a fireball won't. Okay? You can't get a fireball through a two inch crevice, but you sure as heck can poke the nozzle of a fire extinguisher through that two inch crevice and put a fire out from one side of a wall. So understand when I say it's not here to try and replace it, it is here as an additional tool to make life easier for first response, for people that have property and such forth that don't want to lose everything they got in one hit. So yeah, where is it at? Well, some guys here already know about the fireball uh, because they have it already equipped in their, um, their sites. Um, Evolution Mining already has it equipped up at Mount Carlton. Um, you'll see the photos of the sag mill and all that up there and the cooler. Um, Create Energy have them, um, mandatory now to be fitted in all Create Energy boxes. Um, that's straight from their upper level management. The, um, um, there's two marine places down on the Gold Coast that actually have them fitted out in um, their servicing boats for servicing ships. We have um, the top one in the right hand corner there, that's actually Sky Cranes down in Melbourne. Okay, they're, the big sky cranes that are up above you cost them in excess of $30,000 to pull them down every time one of their sensors go off 
in their fire alarm system. So they've got to pull it down, go through it, check it all, put it all back up. So it's costing them a fortune. So we've had a couple of incidences where the alarm didn't go off in the actual, their fire pyro system and they actually had a fire and the fireball put it out before it even got to the thing. So, and the operator continued to do the job. So it was only a heat, oil residue, lifted, burnt, bang, fireball put it out, allowed him to keep going because it was only a residue that was on the outside and it was the heat that induced the residue fire. So yeah, um, so yeah, basically we got some demonstrational videos that are you know, from all around the world, not just us, so to speak. Um, we have one with Queensland Fire and Rescue. It's Joshua Knott uh, from Mount Cartney RT Coordinator. I just wanted to share with you guys a quick demonstration of a, a product fairly new to the market. It's called the Allied Fireball. Um, so this captivated my attention um, in relation to ERT initially, uh, but I can see a, a wider and greater use for it. So a little bit about it, it's, a, it's an automated fire suppression um, system basically. It's, it's very lightweight, 1.3 kilos, five years maintenance free. There's no training required. It's literally just lobbed into a fire or a room or a car or have it statically positioned uh, in a kitchen, potentially a, an electrical control box or an MCC or, or a wide variety of uses. Um, this ball can put out any type of class of fire, um, so very unique in that. Um, I just want to uh, reiterate, this is a controlled environment, it's just a controlled demonstration. I'll get Paul to go around. We've got the fire truck and a few other bits and pieces set up. So as you can see, it does not have a fire pit, ambulance on standby, a couple of fire extinguishers, and the fire truck. So quite simply, just to demonstrate the ball and how it, how it works, uh, I'll do two tests. Uh, I'll do a static test using fuel uh, to see how it goes uh, putting out a fuel fire. So I've got a bracket mounted to the wall and I'll, I'll do a, uh, uh, another test and throw it into a simulated car or a donger. It'll just be into a little fire pit that I've got set up here. Hope you guys enjoy uh, and we'll see how we go. Thanks. So yeah, so you see just what actually happens when it does go off. It hits the wick, burns around, um, sets off the rest of it. When you um, uh, put these balls into activation, they'll actually um, um, do their job, so to speak. Um, 
depending on the intensity of the fire, especially when it comes to like vehicles and such forth. Um, if you've got a fairly fierce, intense fire that's operating, sometimes you may need to throw two balls in if you've got a fire that, like inside a cockpit that's going off pretty hard. Um, most times one will put them out, but just depending on the actual intensity inside and depending on what is actually in the vehicle. Um, because there's all th sorts of things from tradies who have lithium ion batteries and you, know, you guys carry them on site and all that sort of thing, especially with your cordless drills and such forth, um, especially when you're getting a drop using brushless and that. So yeah, so things like that that start going off inside the cockpit with flames, it can be pretty volatile. So it takes a bit more of a punch to actually get them to go out. So yeah, so yeah, there is room for um, ad advancement, most certainly, and it can be put into multiple different applications. Um, I'm working with a bloke at the moment, we're actually looking at flying them with drones and shooting them straight in off a drone. So they can come straight in, drop them through windows. So yeah, so Callum's working on that stuff with me now. Um, Zach Aderman is, is also doing the same in Melbourne. So it's, it's allowing you better fighting tools. You know? How many times do you see a pumper turn up or a ladder truck turn up and the time it takes them to get their, their boom out? You know? You've already got a drone up in there. You, know, you may not be putting the fire out of the building, but you're giving the occupants inside time for these guys to get that ladder up to them and get them out safely. So yeah, so there, there is multiple applications and there is multiple ways that we are looking at trying to induce more safety for, and first response. If I have my way, every firefighter will carry one on their hip because there is no more gut-wrenching thought than when your branch goes down and you're in the middle of a building. And it could be from anything, from a blown hose on the pumper that come off the back of the pump to a piece of building fell down and busted the line. You know, all stuff that you can't predict is going to happen, but it can. So yeah, and it, if it gives a firefighter 30 seconds of clearance to get through, then he's safe. And that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's all I want. So yeah, so if we're all done, we'll go for a walk outside and light her up. Right, uh, just to give you an idea, it, it, it will go off. It will make a, foam, a, a spray of powder everywhere. So the biggest thing 90% of people do go is, crap, because of the bang. Okay, so you are in for a bang. So you are now prepared for it and you've been told. So yeah, um, thankfully the breeze is not blowing the heck out of me, so which won't make it too bad. So yeah, so basically we've just got a simulated fire, um, purely for demonstrational purposes only. All fires change. Never, ever, ever expect one fire to be the same as another. Never happens, okay? The first time that you think you know, and you think that that's what's gonna happen all the time, and that's the way the fire's gonna be, you're a bloody idiot. So yeah, ready? Here we go. That's out. Okay, some went a little bit further than I thought. So yeah, but you can see the visual effects as to what it does. That was a manual set off, okay? So I'll set it up for a static, which is where we actually mount it on a wall and that sort of thing. Right, this is just a simulation as to the actual thing being mounted on a wall so you see what happens when a fire comes up underneath it. Righto, so there you see it. It's mounted as it would be on a wall in a factory, around a building, wherever. That can be mounted along a corridor wall. People can walk along, pick it up, 
put it down a fire on a stairwell, put out the fire, go down the stairwell and get out. Righto, so we're all lit. Righto. As you can see, the fire underneath is not up to it. I'll crank it up and you'll see it walk up to it and set it off. So that shows you just how fast and how effective it is. Okay? So yeah, so you see what it does. Um, you see the effects that it has. Okay? It doesn't take long. The thing of it is, is that it is something that extinguishes the fire. And as you can see, it will extinguish gas, okay? But it's a first response extinguish, okay? Never ever, ever think that you've put a fire out, okay? Because you haven't, okay? Because there is always a possibility of an underlying heat factor, wind, which will reignite something, okay? But this is a first response, fireball puts them out, okay? That gives you time to get in, get out, or get your first responder in there, so to speak, with a paramedic. So that's about all I can tell you and show you for now. Thank you.